Anytan versus Make. How do you make sure that you choose correctly for 2025? My name is Jack. I make six figures a month with AI and have the highest ranked AI automation group on the planet. And I just had a conversation with the head of Applied AI at Make and we learned some interesting things that might influence your decision between Make and Anytan. I'll show you exactly what that is and I'll show you three important considerations between Anytan and Make, which means you can get light years ahead and you don't waste any of your precious time. So starting with NA10, one of the key functionalities people often reference why they love NA10 is this AI agent. And unlike Make, which is linear in terms of everything going from left to right, at the moment, in Ethan, we have these AI agents, which effectively, when we call upon them, can do many different things. They can reach over and book Google Calendar appointments, do things with Gmail, access their memory, leverage things, and perform multiple actions in this self-contained block, and then send a response back out. Now, in Make at the moment, by contrast, if you wanted to do that, you can still do that, but the workflows become a little bit more complicated because at the moment today, Make doesn't have an AI agent and I'll get onto that very shortly. NA10 does feel like it's built more for coders and it does have a steeper learning curve, but cutting straight to the chase, it can be way more cost effective at significant scales. But the most sort of often cited reason why people love NA10 is because you can self host it and have it just running by yourself, which you can't do at the moment with make.com. And the other really cool thing about NA10 is you can actually have multiple triggers in the exact same scenario and they make it easier to trigger other scenarios that you have. So for example, in this scenario I've got here, which is an AI agent that we built in a video um, not too long ago, the trigger could either be a Telegram message, a WhatsApp message, and also at the same time, uh, this vector where we basically upload information to our knowledge base. So you could have multiple different things existing in one environment and you wouldn't have to stack different scenarios together. Then we head over to Make. Now Make has a absolutely gorgeous user interface and design. It is so easy to drag and drop. And as a beginner, getting your very first AI automation up and running is super easy. It's super, super, super configurable. It kind of makes sense. You know, there's a lot of like Steve Jobs inspired aspects with Make. In other words, like you start with the user experience and work backwards. Like when you add modules um, that reference other modules, like they pulse and do very interesting things. And so it just actually physically using it and you can see there's a hover over that pulses. It's very intuitive, amazing for beginners to get started. And almost every AI automation that you would ever need you can build a make.com. On the top of that, Make has a significantly large number of integrations. Like you can integrate with so many other things. And that is really one area that excels at above NA10 because it doesn't necessarily have all of those native integrations that you get in Make. And even in circumstances where NA10 will have the integration, Make has just made it very easy to specify the specifics that you need, meaning that NA10 can have a little bit more of a, I guess I'd say like complicated learning curve to make sure you get those integrations even when it does have them there. Now, with that in mind, most people that I speak to in terms of why they're using NA10, and again, we don't wanna to have to learn loads of new technologies just for the sake of it, but I think you'll find this really interesting because I sat down with the head of Applied AI yesterday uh, and also one of the business development managers, really cool people, and they shared some breaking stuff about the vision of exactly where Make.com's heading. And Make.com will be releasing a native AI agent within their platform. They basically said, and I'll put a link to the podcast on the screen somewhere so you can check that out, but it was freaking incredible. One of the things they said they want to do is make AI agents as easy and as simple to use as humanly possible. So you will be able to have AI agents within Make. So if AI agents is the only reason why you want to shift everything over to NA10, it's worth considering that Make at some point is gonna have AI agents coming as soon as they can. Obviously they need to make sure they take the right boxes but we're gonna have AI agents within Make. Does that mean that you shouldn't learn an A10? No, it's always valuable to learn these new different technologies. If you're a beginner and you're just getting started, Make will always cover like almost any scenario that you will ever need. But as you get more kind of advanced into the system, it's great to broaden your horizons with different technologies because each of the platforms have different quirks that you can access and use. And there's also some other really interesting functionalities coming into Make that are probably gonna be really game-changing, like the grid, your ability to have a really simple scenario and then have that part of an ecosystem of scenarios where you can zoom out and see them connected to different things. So it's worth considering what's coming down the road and not just abandoning one software because it doesn't have AI agents at today's date. And the reality of NA10, it's got a steeper learning curve. It does, there's just more stuff to learn if you're getting started. So for example, if I click on a module here, we have this central console here, where on the left-hand side is all the information inputs from the previous module, and we can select that or whatever. And on the output is the output side, where obviously the stuff and the content it's producing. 
Whereas by contrast, if you check out a make for, for instance, uh, everything is managed kind of like in this nice little panel here and it kind of moves a little bit more. It, it, you know, the user interface itself is a little bit easier to understand and engage with. So it's way more beginner friendly in the way that you would typically use it. And if you are using um, an ATM, it's kind of a little bit more geared to coders, which doesn't mean that you can't make sense of it and doesn't mean that you can't crush it with it. It just means it'll take a little bit longer to actually get up and running and get some really effective working scenarios. As it stands today, by far, in my opinion, the most superior use case that an AI has is its presence of an AI agent and just the capabilities that that gives you. I, I think that is really significant. So from my perspective, I'm still gonna be developing stuff in make.com where it makes sense, but also AI agents in NA10 are just something you can't avoid at the moment until make releases that feature. So. A really simple way to think about this is that NA10 is really indexing heavily on AI agents. And if self hosting, you know, running it on your own kind of like CPU, your own servers is really important to you, you may want to consider NA10, but actually you can still cover almost any automation that you need using make.com. And that leads on to another question, which is around shiny object syndrome. The same thing that makes you an incredible entrepreneur is also sometimes the same things that can hold us back. And it's that finding new and incredible shiny objects and we think that oh my gosh this is a new thing this is a new breakthrough it could be ideas or business ideas but also software one of my observations in the space is that whenever there's something new it gets like so much new attention not that n8n is new per se because it has been around for a little bit period of time but sometimes wherever the kind of uh, nucleus of focus moves everyone kind of feels like you have to rush to this new thing and talk about this brand new thing. And sometimes a lot of what I do when I think is how do you separate like, I guess the froth or the hype for the stuff that actually works. And that's something I, that I really wanna I send on my channel around, my school community around is the stuff that actually works. So I say that to say, unless you really wanna use AI agents per se, or you're very interested in self-hosting, if you feel you're getting everything that you need out of make.com, the scenario is working perfectly. It's not prohibitive for you on a cost basis. Don't feel that you need to drop make.com or Zapier and head straight over and rebuild absolutely everything in NA10. There's a really good value in using NA10 and learning these different technologies, but I wouldn't just ditch the thing that you're using and bring everything over just because you can build agents in a different platform. It's completely okay to have multiple tools. And generally, I also prefer to have fewer technologies and stretch those to the limits than have five or six different technologies where things just are feeling very, very complicated. So here's the bottom line. If you are a beginner and you're new to AI and automations, start with mate.com, learn the concepts of AI and automations and begin there and enjoy your wonderful, beautiful journey. If you wanna build AI agents, I would recommend that you use the platform NA10 to do that. That means you can have both platforms at the same time. It can be a little bit of a steeper learning curve. And one of the things I want to do in the channel is help to make that as simple and as easy for you to just plug and play and get started. If self-hosting is really important for you, I'd recommend using NA10. But the future of Make is super exciting. The technologies, the way they're thinking about these things is gonna be epic. So I don't see a future where we won't be using Make uh, for a very, very, very long time because the technologies and the ideas that, that the guys have about are flipping epic. So we'll be using both technologies on my channel going forward. But if you're just getting started, don't feel the pressure to ditch make and head run over and get started with NA10. And one of the things I was talking about with my team is how we could actually, for those that do want to move over to NA10, how you could bookend your scenarios from make. So how we can turn these incredible scenarios that we've got and make uh, with webhooks either side of it and actually call those from NA10. So if you've got a library, an Alexandria's library of content in Make and you'd love to take the switch over to NA10, uh, let me know down below if you'd like a video on this or some tutorials, but one of the things we can do is just have your NA10 scenario reach over and contact and pull that information and run those scenarios in make.com using webhooks. So if that's something you'd love to see a bit more of, let me know down below, but I think that's a really great way for those who want to move, because I'd imagine a lot of people are gonna be somewhere between 100% make, 100% NA10, and everything in between. So we're gonna do things that make sense for everybody. But the bottom line is, guys, these are exciting technologies, and we're always gonna be in a position where we do need to learn new things because the game can change so much quickly. The only caveat to that is just to make sure that we're using the stuff that actually makes sense, that we're not getting caught up in hype and it actually drives value, which these technologies do. I hope you found this video interesting. Have a beautiful week, and I'll see you in the next one.